So I want to talk to you a little bit about this state of oneness and the state of the world at the same time. And so I know that you know not everybody likes for me to talk about politics because they come here to be escaped from politics. But on this day before the election, I just thought I'd just take advantage of the fact that we need to act and live and speak as though we believed it. And part of the problem with the political atmosphere that we're in is we're invited constantly to not see ourselves as one with everyone, but to be tribal and to have our side win and in a zero-sum game, their side lose. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about the moral stances that uh, we take. I want to talk about the conditions that we, that we develop our moral code. So in. the first one I'd like to uh, say is this idea of no harm. So if you, you shouldn't harm other people. That's kind of like the first one. And everybody kind of buys that one, hook, line, and sinker, uh, most of the time, anyway. And the second one is fairness. And you know, you see even little children understand fairness. It's even been said that dogs understand There are fairness. three more. There's um, in-group and loyalty that you belong to a group and you should be loyal to that group. That's another form of morality that we have in it and you can see that on the playground but you can also see it in nations and um, football teams, right? Do it for the team. Um, the other one is authority and respect and that is that some people should have authority over other people and every parent at some point says, because I say so, right? They pull the authority respect Trump card, and that's the one they play. Of course, it makes sense. Not, a child should not be telling the parent a lot of things. <laughs> and then there's purity and sanctity, like uh, moral purity or, or um, ideology purity. And one of the things that's disturbing is that this purity, this ideological purity, Purity says we don't we don't compromise with anybody. We know what's right, our way or the highway. In the liberals, the first two are are are, are really ascendant. The the ones about don't harm and fairness, and that's why they're very much about inclusivity, and bringing in a, and taking care of those who have been uh, ostracized by society. Uh, perhaps more about letting immigrants in and that sort of thing. That's kind of a those two are ascendant in the liberal community. Um, and they rank fairly high in the uh, conservative community. But the liberal community stops right there, and the conservative community continues on with the other three. So there's a sense of you should respect authority, and that there's a hierarchical aspect of it, and that there are norms that we must agree to and therefore there needs to be order. So you can imagine that um, to the conservative mind, this lack of order, this letting everybody in, this doing just anything you want, everything is acceptable, is not acceptable. And I, I happen to know that most of you fall on this first category of liberal, and not everyone, but, but there's a righteousness on the left about these people over here on the other side, and yet it turns out they have more moral practice and practices than the liberals do. So it's something to ponder that, hey, judge your neighbor, maybe you're wrong. So we need to be clear that both sides have a point of view valid and worthy of the respect of the So other. my hope is that what we will change is to begin to look at the world as though we're all in the same tribe. And if we don't do better about loving each other and seeing each other as morally equivalent or better, we're not going to do so. And the way to do that is to see the other as yourself. To see all as yourself. And this recognize, as Holly said, you know, it's like judge your neighbor and then see that judgment is really pointing as much as you, or more so, than, the, than your neighbor. And that you don't really know if they should be like that. You don't, you don't really know. 
I think humility is the very thing we're asked to bring to this problem. Deep and profound humility. I don't know. I stand for this, I believe in this, but is it the absolute maximum truth? I don't know. Don't you just want to be loved and happy? Is it, is it? And you know that jerk over there on the other side, what does he want? To be loved and happy. He has a strategy about how to do it that's different than yours, but what does he want? To be loved and happy. And he wants to be successful in all the things he does, right? And he wants to feel safe. And he wants to feel like he's making a contribution, and that he's, he's, on, he's following, he's being good enough. He wa- what is that, right? And what do you want? The same thing. You want everything that he wants. You just have a different strategy. The news cycle has occupied more time than your prayer cycle has. Right? So dial it down and build it up, you know? Spend more time in prayer and meditation. It's only this I that says I'm separate that causes a sensation of much of our suffering. If you can thin that I thought down, then you don't have to suffer as much. So let's not let politics be the thing that forces us into the I thought into a separate sense of self, into tribalism, into unhappiness. Let's be smarter than that. Please vote. It will make you feel like you belong to this country. Please vote. State your case. You have extended your tribe from half to all the country when you vote. You say, I belong and I contribute. But don't take a stand that says, I win, you lose, or you win, I lose. We're all in this together.